So it is a freezing day in Toronto and today's gonna be chock full of Canadian content for you today. There's gonna be so much Canadian content you're gonna feel like I'm injecting maple syrup straight into your veins. It was a cold one today. That was, it's a lot of layers. In case you're wondering why my bike is still here, I haven't quite figured out where to put this bike yet. I'm still kind of shuffling it around. Um, I could put it in our common space, but I don't want to be that jerk that puts all his stuff in the shared area. And also, I already have my triangle bike there. It wasn't hard to climb at all. At the top, I found some relief. I finally got some peace. Carry on with peace. But if you're a cycling enthusiast and you have any ideas or suggestions, I need to beat it, but we mess up the mood. Yeah, ooh, I work too hard for it. And I need it, so please don't mess up the mood. Don't, 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 don't mess up the mood. Don't, 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 don't mess up the mood. Before we begin, I'm going to need two things. First, reference. I've never drawn Mr. Monster before. Second are thumbnails or layouts. These are meant to be my compositional guideline as I work on this image. Once I pin down my composition, I then rough in the figure work. The way I do my figures, it's very loose. I don't really focus on the exact musculature. Rather, I focus on dynamics and just creating a pose that is very fluid and less rigid and stiff. Once I pin down the general posing of the character, I'll then lightly erase it so that way I have a bit more of a blank canvas to work on. Then I'll begin to add in all the details and the exact musculature of the figure work. Now, before I get into the next step, I should probably give you some context on who Mr. Monster is. I'll spare you guys the coffee montage. Mr. Monster was created by this comic book writer and artist who resided in Toronto and I think eventually Owen Sound. His name was Fred Kelly. And it was part of this World War II era of comic books that was being produced in Canada. I believe it was called the Canadian Whites. Um, so, so, let me Google that. Mixing a couple different colors, I then begin to work on what will be my base layer for this painting. This is really watered down gouache and is meant to tint the paper rather than paint it. It's just creating a bit of texture in the underlying uh, structure of the painting. I then saturate it a little bit and begin to block out the major shapes of this painting. Using a watered down gouache, I then begin to chunk in some of the major shadows of this monster. Now, one of the things I like about gouache is that I can make it look like watercolor the more I water it down. But in this scenario, I need a bit more saturation. So I'm using some ink to really put an extra emphasis on these heavy shadows of the monster. Now back to gouache, I'm beginning to chunk in the major shape of the monster. As you can see, I'll be honest, I think I kind of messed this part up because it just kept getting darker and darker and I was beginning to lose the shape and the details of the monster. I'm gonna have to fix that later. I'm not quite sure how yet, but we'll, we'll see what happens. So chunking in a bit of the rocks and adding in more inks and saturation because I want the foreground to have the highest saturation on this image. So using ink allows me to really pop the rock that he's standing on forward. 
in the next step that I'm about to do, mixing a couple colors, uh, I find that purple kind of maroon color, these are great tones for creating shadows because they really work well um, with cool or warmer color palettes. With most of my paintings, I usually always start with the shadows. Now, I've kind of pivoted to turning the shadows purple because I wanted the image to have a cooler feel rather than a warmer feel, especially since he's predominantly red. I figured a more purple shadow will create better contrast in the image than something cooler like the maroon. Okay, <laughs> all right, so it wasn't, uh... It sounds weird. Back in the World War II era, there was something called the War Exchange Conservation Act. And essentially, uh, only essential goods were being imported and exported to and from Canada and to the US. So one of those things that was not considered essential or were comic books. To fill in that void, Canadian writers and artists uh, started producing original content and they had traditionally colored covers, but inside they were black and white. And I guess that's how it came to be called Canadian Whites, because it's black and white inside the book. One of the reasons why I love working with gouache is its ability to achieve a high level of saturation. I mean, look at how rich that blue is. It's Wow, chef's kiss, so good. But at the beginning of this video, I was using gouache like watercolor. So the more water I use to dilute the paint, I can achieve those watercolor textures. But if you're familiar with my work, you'll notice that I'm becoming more and more obsessed about creating graphic elements within my artwork. And with painting, sometimes that's a little bit tougher to do, but with gouache, using areas that are flatter allows me to create these bold shapes with my painting and create a more graphic element to what otherwise would be a more quote unquote realistic looking paint by having these spots that are flat it also gives the viewer um, a place to visually rest their eyes now with inking I'm still using my tried and true Pentel brush pen. I bought this years ago, I love it. Um, it's such a simple but convenient tool to ink with a brush. Now going further into the graphic element of this piece, I'm making bold outlines on this painting because I want it to have a bit of a pulpy look and creating these nice thick outlines is really going to make Mr. Monster pop out from the background. With his face, I want to achieve more of a painterly look. So what I'm doing is applying the heavy shadows to his face, but then really working it into the underpainting and trying to get that mid-tone. You kind of got to do it while the paint is still wet so that way it can blend in nicely. Again, what you're seeing here is kind of how cool gouache is. You can see how I was able to paint that yellow over his belt even though it's black. I don't know if you can tell, but I'm, I'm pretty excited about gouache. I don't get to paint as often as I'd like, and I still feel like I'm only scratching the surface of what this medium can do. And the way I'm using gouache right now feels very juvenile to me. Um, there's still so much to learn, and with these types of pieces, even though these are images that people have have purchased, um, it allows me the ability to learn. In some ways, I'm almost getting paid to learn. Um, but a lot of people are really happy with this type of pieces because rather than getting a traditional black and white image, they're getting this fully 
painted superhero pinup. It's not very typical to get stuff fully painted in, in color, especially when it comes to commissions or in this case, Kickstarter campaign rewards. Now, I know earlier I was going to go for that graphic feel of the red, but it just wasn't looking quite right. And I wanted to make him pop a little bit more. So I'm adding in a bit more of deeper reds to his costume to really make Mr. Monster pop. Many characters were created back then. Uh, notably, one of them is Nelvana, who I believe predates uh, Wonder Woman. So I feel like I'm kind of just stumbling on words. I'm gonna let the original Kickstarter campaign speak for itself. We're now entering the home stretch of the image. This is also the stage of drawing that I like to call moment of self-doubt because I'm beginning to doubt every decision that I've made on this piece. In fact, looking at myself cross-hatching the hell out of this mouth, I'm not only am I doubting, I, <laughs> dude, that's a mistake, man. There was a nice contrast being created by the green to the red of his costume. And uh, the cross-hatching is kind of, crushing that contrast. I know why I did that cross hatching. It's because I was feeling insecure. The person who purchased this piece uh, purchased it a long time ago and I felt like I needed to give it that extra oomph. This is a white jelly roller pen. Um, remember earlier when I said that I think I made the monster a little too dark and lost some of the details. This pen allows me to bring back some of those details and create more of a I guess cool illustrative vibe to them. Now with the backgrounds, this is kind of my go-to move with watercolor and gouache, which is I just dilute the heck out of it and I just dab, 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 dab. It's it's gonna create texture on its own. You, you don't even need to try. It's just a matter of, you know, splashing some here, you know, spraying some, some splatter here and there. Now with the teeth, I'm adding just some plain white gouache to give those razor sharp teeth a bit more of a, of a pop. And also I didn't really erase any of the pencils. So adding in some of this white really cleans the image up a bit. This was actually a really satisfying moment. Um, adding in gouache to that skeleton, that to me signified that I was getting close to the end. Now, because I made the mouth so dark, I had to lighten the shadows on his hands there um, to kind of create and bring back that contrast I once had and then lost when I added that cross hatching. A little bit more jelly roller pen here to really pop this monster out and also to pop this rock out. To, to tell you the truth, uh, I made a lot of mistakes on this piece. I didn't really think it through very well. But this is where the jelly roller pen can really save the day and <sighs> manufacture um, contrast. Entering the splatter stage, this is my favorite part of a painting, which is splattering the heck out of it with white gouache and black ink. Part of the reason why I love it so much is that it reintroduces a sense of kinetic energy to the piece because it's, it's random. I mean, I'm controlling where it's going, but I'm not really exactly sure where it's gonna land. One of the things that artists often complain about, and it's something I complain about all the time, is when you go from thumbnails to the finished piece, often you are gonna lose energy because those thumbnails have a, a sense of freedom to the way that they're drawn that is untethered to, to detail and 
anything too meticulous. So energy is often lost once you begin to execute the drawing and any technique that you can find to bring back that energy that the piece once had in the layouts is completely, completely necessary at least for me it is and using splatter and, and whiteouts and really carving the piece up and introducing a sense of chaos to what an otherwise is a finished image to bring back that energy as you can see here even more splatter i, I just i just can't get enough of it sometimes you got you got to take this brush away from me otherwise this whole thing will just be splattered everywhere Remember when I said this video is chock full of Canadian content? Well, if you enjoyed this video and think Mr. Monster is pretty cool and want to read more about his adventures, my good friends at Raid Studios is actually going to be publishing this collected edition. So I'm super stoked and excited for that. I mean, again, it's been 70 years since the original Mr. Monster has been published. I hope that you enjoyed this video and learn something through my haphazard process. I'm still trying to figure this out. Everything is, uh, is a work in progress and I'm just happy to share some of the knowledge that I've acquired through my mistakes. As you've seen in this video, I made plenty, but I hope that this video was somewhat helpful to you as you enter your own artistic journey and make your own screw ups. But don't worry, onwards and upwards, because you can always make it up on the next page. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Feel like I'm at the tippy top of my game, looking down at the rafters. I had to sun these boys, can't leave them bastards. A lot of dudes, just some undercover actors. I don't fall for it, I'm privy to all your tactics. Yeah, so try again, it's time to take a vitamin. Yeah, and vitamin, welcome to the lion's den. And I'm Mufasa, big boss in charge of coming in like a bull. You see me raising the stock up, uh, yeah. So baby, you gon' need some patience I already won, now I'm just making a statement uh, Damn, baby, why your mans keep hatin'? You askin' about the cake, you here for the celebrations? And I ain't fishin', I ain't really into baitin' I know they all wish I'd take away they maiden But sorry I'm takin', me and my lady matein' She look me in the eyes and tell me 